Hi, this is Quant Nomad. Welcome to my channel. So people pretty often ask me why should I use Python for backtesting and not TradingView, NinjaTrader and any other you know like tools built specifically for that. So the uh, main reason is that you're completely free to do whatever you want. So you can use any number of bars in your backtest. You can use any methods in your backtest. Even machine learning is quite easy in Python. Uh, you can use any data sources you want. You found like a data set online, you can use it in your backtesting, no problem with that. You can calculate any metrics on your uh, strategy. You can um, you know, calculate like portfolio of your strategies. You know, you can do whatever you want and this is really great. And in this video, we'll show you just an example how you can calculate uh, a backtest in Python using Backtrader basically on millions of rows and as you can see from this video that's not a problem for python so if you like my content please um, like this video and subscribe to my channel this will help me to create more useful videos for you so let's start so i already wrote the code for this exercise now let's go through the code executed and just i uh, will explain you how it works so first of all just important libraries I need in um, in my code. So for uh, back testing itself, I'm using Backtrader library. I believe this is one of the best libraries in Python you can use to backtest your stuff. It's very flexible and it's, it's quite easy to use. I'm using requests and JSON uh, libraries to parse data from uh, Binance. Also using Pandas just to work with uh, data frames, date time to, to work with dates and times, Matplotlib just to plot stuff and QGrid to nicely display data frames in a notebook. So that's it, let's uh, execute it to import and import all these libraries. So next you can see function get binance bars. And basically I have another video when I basically show how I create this function. So um, it's quite simple. We just get data from uh, binance API. So uh, as you can see, function has a few parameters. So you have to just pass these parameters. To the function and it will just call the api so it will uh, prepare like parameters for this api we'll call this api parse the results just clean the bit you know like take only columns we need uh, fix you know like uh, types of the columns and just output it so as you can see it's uh, fairly straight straightforward so a uh, next piece of code here will basically download a data from binance uh, from uh, the date i will specify so it's also quite simple. First, we just define like empty list. After that, we define you know from what date we want to get data from. And after that, we have like endless loop, and in, in this loop, it will get like new data from the last date time we observed in uh, in in the in the previous data set. And if it's empty, that this means that we already came to the present moment and there is no data to collect. And um, in all our other cases, we'll append new data frame to our list and we'll just record like last date time as the max date time uh, from the previous data frame and just adding one second to it. And in the end, it will just concat all the elements of this list. So all elements of this list will be like a data frame. So first, we'll just concat this into one data frame so let's execute it and um, see how it works so issue is that i'm using here one uh, minute uh, time frame and i'm using that for like two years or almost two complete years and my estimation that it's it will be around one million uh, bars so it will take quite a lot of time so i will post this video and will resume it uh, when it will be over so it's over and as you can see it took only four minutes 30 seconds to get all this data to two years of one minute data and i think it's not bad and in our uh, data frame now we have almost a million rows as you can see we have 988,000 rows so it's quite a lot of data so now let's try to run you know back testing based on this huge number of rows so next let's create our strategy so i have another video when i uh, created this uh, moving average cross strategy it's a very simple strategy and basically you have like two moving averages and if you have like a bullish cross you go long if you have like a bearish cross you close long position so it's very very simple as you can see it's just a few lines of code so next let's go and create our engine let's like fit our data in 
and let's add our strategy uh, set cash to 1 million dollars uh, i will add sizer that will invest 50 percent of our uh, our cash into um, this, this position and i will add a few analyzers just to see how strategy performed so let's execute it and next let's run our um, our engine it also will take a few minutes because like we have quite a lot of data so i will pause the video again so it's done and as you can see it took only eight minutes to compute this back testing and i think that's not bad for one million rows and um, uh, my server is not most powerful uh, here so after your uh, backtesting is calculated you can go and do your usual stuff just you know we can uh, get you know ending balance uh, for our backtesting and it seems like we earn it about like 70 percent and it's not super good because i don't have commissions and for this kind of strategy if i will add commissions it will kill it completely but it doesn't matter i just created to show you that uh, python really can uh, work with really uh, big data sets and back test really big, big, big data sets. You can go and calculate sharp and sharp seems to be good like 0.7 but still no commission so that's not very good. And also we can go and compute for, compute for example a number of trades it took to uh, compute all this. So it, as you can see we have quite a lot of transactions we have 28,000 transactions and um, it's quite a lot and you can go and try to plot uh, results of our backtesting but it will take a while because we have really 1 million of you know like time series uh, points and we have 28,000 transactions so it's quite a lot so I think that's all for this video I hope that you understood better that what what Python can do in terms of uh, backtesting uh,